Hey guys, this is Matt Granger, that Nikon guy for mattgranger.com. I've come out today specially, and apologies for the squinting, because it's uh, around the harshest time of day for lighting. Um, it's really, really bright and glary, and it's a perfect time to introduce this circular polarizing filter. This is the Hoya HD Circ Polarizer, and this is their premium one. The HD is Hoya's top of the line and it's meant to be you know the best quality glass and the the least distortion that it's going to enter into your image this one also absorbs uv rays has an eight layer uh, coating to reduce reflections and it's water oil scratch repellent um, the distributor told me if i want to do a test to show you that i can draw on it with a ballpoint pen and it'll just wipe off it won't damage it so there you go Anyway, to give you an idea of how glary this is, at uh, f3.2, we're at one eight thousandth of a second, so it's extremely bright and glary. Okay, so this is the 77mm version, which is perfect for me because nearly all of my lenses are 77mm. The HDs come in a black box like this one, and they are all made in Japan, so, you know, make sure you check that. It's um, possible to buy dodgy um, filters online that aren't genuine at all. Okay, so looking at it from the inside, what will differentiate it to your eye? Yeah, well, apart from the fact that it's um, you know, a nice gray tone, it's very slim line. Compared to some of the other circular polaroids, they can be twice as thick as this one. And the thicker it is, the more chance you're gonna have for vignetting. Um, so I uh, thought I'll take a couple of test shots to show you with and without it and then I'll actually put this on the video and demonstrate using it. To attach it to your lens it just screws on like any filter. They're all standard thread sizes so no problem. And then you'll notice all circular polarizers are split in two and the front section can rotate. Because it's a circular polarizer, you need to rotate it to make sure you're getting the proper effect of it cancelling out the glare from the sun's rays. Alright, so to start off, I'm going to do these at f8, no exposure compensation, and just take some shots along the car to show you without the circular polarizer what effect it's giving in this bright light. Okay, you can't see it too clearly because the white, you're just blowing out and losing detail, but you can see the flare above the light there. Whilst this may not show the glare extremely well, this is a good example of what you're missing out on. That looks like an okay shot and it doesn't look like it's too glary, but wait until you see it compared to the one that has been shot with the polarizer. Okay, now the only thing I'm changing between these is popping on the circular polarizer. Of course, the camera is going to compensate for that reduction in light to keep the scene properly uh, exposed. Um, so it'll just be the difference in terms of glare. So I'll be rotating this to make sure I'm minimizing the glare. You'll see that on the car, and then you'll also see what it does to the uh, grass and sky in the background. Okay, so now this is with the polarizer on. I hope the difference is going to come through on video. The next one, when it changes angle a little bit, that's without the polarizer. You can see there's less detail in the white. And this one is with the circular polarizer on. Just note the color green and blue in the grass and sky. And now this is with it off. Rewind if you need to to see the difference. Okay, just to demonstrate that further, you'd know that um, when you're shooting in overcast conditions, colours are much more saturated. Again, if you haven't uh, got this concept, uh, click on this link, it'll take you to a video where I discuss it. So in, on a day like today, the sky is going to, the sky and the grass and all those sort of things are going to be really washed out of colour. So I'll just get a close-up of the grass and one of the trees with the sky above it, with and without the polarizer, so you can see that as well. Now this makes it clearer. This is without circular polarizer. You can see me on the left. That's with. Now it's not just the exposure's gone down. It's that's back up. See the concrete on the side is still properly exposed. This is without circular polarizer. This is with. Now notice the buildings haven't changed that much. It's the saturation. Okay, that's back without. And if that didn't show you enough, let me show you a video that really shows it up. 
Okay guys, to really demonstrate this here, I've focused on the bonnet of a car and you can see it's just blowing out from, it's got direct sunlight bouncing off it. Now this is really an extreme version, it's a silver car, middle of the daytime sun, you can see up the, on the top of the windscreen there is a big blowout and on the bonnet. Now I'm going to screw on the circular polarizer here in video. Okay, now the camera has adjusted for the, um, the light that it's stopping from coming through. Now I'm just using my fingertips to rotate the front there and you can see the amount of glare it takes down. You see there, it's brought it down to the smallest amount and here I'm rotate, continuing to rotate. So there, you know, it's not in the right position. Here rotating it back, that's about right. So you can see how much of a difference that makes. All I'm doing there is rotating the front of the circular polarizer to adjust the glare. Pretty amazing stuff, huh? Okay, so you can see that the difference a circular polarizer makes to your shots, especially on really glary days. Um, there's a lot of discussion about whether you should use filters at all, especially with UV filters. I'm actually going to do a series of videos over the next week or so featuring different filters and showing you the results. I'm actually going to do all three of the Hoya uh, circular polarizers, their entry level, mid range, and then this, their upper market one, and show what effect it has on the images. And I'll do the same with UV filters so you can see those as well. Uh, but I think this, those images speak for themselves. You can see there are times when using a circular polarizer is really worthwhile and important, and having the best quality one that you can to reduce any other. Uh, distortions or aberrations in the image is quite important. So thanks for watching guys, this is Matt Granger, that Nikon guy for mattgranger.com.